now on KGW News. Will it work? Oregon turns to cash prizes to entice people to get the vaccine. Interesting. I, I'm not going to hold my breath. Washington announces its rules for vaccinated people ditching the masks. And there's a big difference from Oregon. The man behind the standoff at an Oregon wildlife refuge is taking a shot at a governor's seat. And stick around for the return of Friday Night Hoops, your source for high school basketball action from around the area. First at 11, will you be Oregon's next millionaire? You may be if you're vaccinated. Good evening, I'm Laurel Porter. Happy Friday evening to you. Today, the governor announced vaccinated Oregonians will be eligible for cash prizes, including a million dollar jackpot. But as Mike Benner explains, Oregonians have mixed feelings about the incentive program. Already fully vaccinated himself, Brian Hendrickson took his daughter to the Oregon Convention Center Friday to get her a first shot. Unbeknownst to Hendrickson, the clinic was closed. Any disappointment, though, quickly gave way to excitement over the incentive announced by Governor Kate Brown just hours earlier. Sounds like a lottery. <laughs> Sounds good, though. We're going to give you an extra incentive. You heard right. The governor revealed that any Oregonian, 18 and older, who gets vaccinated by June 27th is eligible to win $1 million. And for vaccinated Oregonians between the ages of 12 and 17, five $100,000 scholarships are on the table. I think it's pretty cool. You know, it it's definitely going to motivate people to get it. So that's pretty good. The governor's Take Your Shot Oregon campaign will also include 36 prizes of $10,000, one for each county. Take your shot, Oregon. Roll up your sleeves and get a chance to change your life. Interesting. I, I'm not going to hold my breath, so I'll just put it that way. Anthony Gray has gotten his first shot. He's about a week and a half away from his second. Gray says the $1 million jackpot does very little, if anything, to entice him to get vaccinated. I would have gotten it regardless because this is a health issue. This is this is affecting the entire world. So I want to be safe so other people can be safe. The Hendricksons want to do their part, too. Only difference is they're awfully intrigued by the cash prizes now available. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's cool. We can tell you that other states, including New York and Maryland, have announced similar lottery prizes. The drawing here in Oregon is scheduled for June 28th, and we know that family and employees of the Oregon Lottery, the Governor's Office, the Treasurer's Office, and OHA are not eligible to win any of the prizes. So your odds just improved. Reporting in Northeast Portland, I'm Mike Benner for KGW News. We want to check those odds, too. Here's where Oregon stands when it comes to vaccine progress. Of those 16 and older in the state, 48% are now fully vaccinated. Another 11.8% have had their first dose. Today, five Oregon counties moved down to the lower risk category. They reached the threshold of 65% of residents 16 and older being vaccinated. Take a look at the map. Hood River, Lincoln, Benton, Deschutes, and Washington counties are now at lower risk. Multnomah County has also vaccinated enough people and is hoping to get approval to move to lower risk by next Wednesday. The county just submitted a required equity plan today. That plan details how the county will close the gaps in vaccinating vulnerable people. Counties moving to lower risk can now allow a maximum of 50% capacity at restaurants, gyms and movie theaters and retail can go to 75% capacity. Washington will work a little bit differently when it comes to vaccinated people ditching the masks inside businesses. Governor Inslee announced today businesses do not have to ask for proof of vaccination from customers not wearing masks. That differs from Oregon, which is requiring businesses to check vaccine status. Inslee said businesses can still choose to check for proof if they want to. Otherwise, they should assume customers are fully vaccinated if they're not wearing a mask. Starting Monday, Portland is going to ramp up homeless camp sweeps. They were largely on pause during the pandemic, but you've likely noticed camps have grown. There's an issue with just getting by on some sidewalks downtown, and there are cleanliness concerns. City staff will prioritize camps for clearing based on a list of criteria, and that includes camps with eight structures or more, camps where human waste is prevalent, those that are considered an extreme fire risk, 
those with reports of criminal activity or those blocking sidewalks. Meanwhile, the city continues to push new alternative shelter options for those living on the streets. Today marked the official opening of a tiny home village in the St. John's neighborhood. Public funds help the nonprofit Do Good Multnomah and the Home Builders Foundation create spots for 19 people. In addition to shelter, the site provides shared amenities, including laundry, as well as case management services. The goal is to help people eventually transition into a home of their own. City Commissioner Dan Ryan spoke today about how this issue has touched him personally. I was on the phone this morning with my niece, and uh, she's the daughter of my brother who passed away on the streets eight years ago. And I was telling her what was going to happen later today, and she said, yeah, dad needed those kind of services. So there are people on the streets that have mental health episodes, that are having a really hard time getting through their substance abuse challenges, that one day at a time could start to find some hope and can build that resilience. This site has been in the works for more than two years and suffered a series of setbacks. That includes being hit by vandals while under construction late last year. Now to get you caught up on tonight's other headlines, a woman was arrested in Cedar Hills for shoving a nine-year-old boy to the ground. Lacey Lanahan told police she did it because of his race. Police say she also threw an object at someone in a store nearby because of their race. The 31-year-old was arrested on bias crime charges. Anti-government activist Ammon Bundy has entered the race to be Idaho's next governor. According to documents filed today with the Secretary of State's office in Idaho, he's running as a Republican in the 2022 gubernatorial primary. Bundy is best known for leading an armed standoff at the Malheur Wildlife Refuge in Oregon five years ago. Oregon's preparing for possible power shutoffs to prevent wildfires this season. The Public Utility Commission approved a new set of rules. They say power companies have the final say on whether they'll cut power when fire danger is high, but they will be required to notify the public. They also have to report any fire that sparks from their own equipment.